Hello and welcome to section 2, Diving into Interactive React Apps. We will cover handling events, interacting with state, and building our first mini application. In this video, we're going to learn how to handle mouse, keyboard, form, and browser events. Here's an overview of the page we're going to work with to add all of our event handling logic. Over in app.js, we see that we're importing two new React components here and one new CSS file that's responsible for styling this entire document. We're rendering out those components here instead of the card components that we previously had. Over in the sidebar, you'll see that I've created the events directory already, nested underneath the source folder where all of our code has been living up until this point. All of the contents of these files are provided to you as a part of this course, so feel free to use them to get started on your end so from here, let's jump into input events.js, which contains the logic for the top three sections of our page. Hit command B to hide the sidebar and get started with the code. First up, let's add some click handling to our button. So we'll go down to the button element and do on click equals open closing curly braces. And here we'll specify an anonymous function that will tell to console log out a string. We hit save open up our console. Now when we hit the click me button, we see the logs coming out in the console. We can replace this anonymous function with a class function that we can define up here that looks something like handle on click. And then we can pass this function as a reference to our on click expression here. Save and open up the console again, and it works just as well. This is the preferred method in the React world to execute event handlers. That way, if we have multiple event handlers on a single element, we'll be able to define multiple functions pretty easily. Okay, so now we want to access state within our handler function here. So we'll type this.state.mouseclick. We give it a save. And when we hit the click me button, we see that it throws an error saying cannot read property state of undefined. The reason for this is because it doesn't know what the this keyword is. When this component is rendered, the handle on click function is passed as a reference. So then later in the future, when the function is executed, it doesn't know that this refers to the context inside of the render function. The two solutions for this is to add a bind function to the end of the reference or to define the binding within the constructor, which looks like this. And we hit save. And then when we open up the console and hit click me a few times again, we see that the state value of zero gets logged out as we expect. So now let's go back to the editor and remove the binding from the render function. So up until this point, we've been accessing our state and rendering them out in our components. But now we want to update the state. So when we click the button here, we want to increment the button clicked counter. React gives us a dedicated method called this.setState that can be used in a couple of different ways to actually update the values in the component state. So the first one is where we pass in a simple object literal with a key and the value of what we want to accomplish. So here we see that mouse clicked is the key that we want to update and we're taking the current value which is zero and we're adding a one to it so if we save and then click it a couple of times we see that the number does increment however anytime we're using an existing value of the state to determine the next value in react we want to use the alternative approach which is this dot set state where we pass it a function that gives us access to the state and it returns a similar object like this and we specify the same key and the value except now that react is giving us the state that it's currently in we can simply call state.mouseclick plus one and if we comment this out we see that this works just as well so now let's go ahead and clean up some code here and add in logic for the mouse down key Currently, the default value is false, but we want to make it so that when our mouse is down, it shows the value as true, and then when we release, it goes back to false. So we start off by scrolling down to the area where the on click is defined, 
and we add in the two other event handlers. Let's define the functions themselves underneath our handle on click function. And then when the mouse down event is triggered, we want to set state so that it's true. And then when it's up, we set it back to false. And in order for these functions to trigger correctly, we have to add in the bindings in the constructor. Let's give it a save. Click a couple of times. And we see our counter going up, as well as the true and false toggling as our mouse button goes down and up. Next up is our input element. If we click it and start typing, we'll notice that nothing is happening. And the reason for that is because the value is being directly set by the state of our React component. So if we scroll down to where it appears in the JSX, we see that this.state.input text is always the hard-coded value that's in the state. So when we're typing, unless the state is being updated, we're not going to see any changes in the input element. This is also known as a controlled component in React, where React is setting the value of the element. So let's go ahead and set our onChange handler function. If we scroll up a bit, we'll be able to define our function. And now we want to set the value of the input text key to whatever is being typed in our input here. In order to access that, we have to pull in the event object that's provided to us by React and the browser DOM. And we do that by doing event.target.value. We can set event to E for short. And let's scroll up to make sure we give it our binding. And then save to give it a test. And it looks good. And last but not least in this file, we're going to add a handler for the submit event on our form. We can scroll down in our code and find the area where the form is defined in the JSX. And we see that the input value that's being outputted is from the key form input text. And this is the value that we want to submit and set it as the value of form input text submitted. Now this doesn't currently exist in the state, but we're going to be adding it. So let's go ahead and set the on submit event handler. And here we'll notice that the syntax is similar, but a little different. This is using an alternative syntax to define a function called public class fields. And it's currently experimental, but will be gaining future support in all browsers. Also with this syntax, we don't have to bind the function in the constructor. Since Create React App uses Babel under the hood, the compiled version of this code will work fine in all browsers. So here we pull in the event object to call prevent default so that when we submit the form, it doesn't refresh the entire page. And we see that we're setting the key of form input text submitted, which doesn't currently exist in the state, and setting it to the value of form input text, which is defined. So if we hit save, and then submit, we see that the value is now set. As a quick challenge, you can set up this input element to be able to change the state so that every time you submit, you can have a different value. All right, so next up, we're gonna focus on the mouse and window scroll events. Let's jump over to movementevents.js and start adding some code. In this section down here for the mouse positions, let's go ahead and add in the on mouse move event. And this function is going to handle the actual movement event. And we see that this follows the standard procedure where the function receives the event object from React. And then we're accessing the values from the event and setting them to these keys here. An interesting thing with these events is that we're seeing e.native event instead of e.target. And the reason for that is because we want to access the native mouse events that the browser is throwing that doesn't really have anything to do with React. So this is how we access those events. And then we get the X and Y offsets of the mouse position when we're hovering over the section. So let's save, go back here. And we see that the X and Y coordinates are updating as we expect. Next up, let's focus on the window scroll position. This one's gonna be a little different because we're not really using React to throw these events. The browser itself at the window level is the one that's handling the scroll events. So we're gonna add some functions here known as component did mount and component will unmount. These are special functions built into React that get called every time the React 
application is rendered and unrendered. So if you had a multi-page application where you're changing pages, this entire component will get unmounted when switching and the window event listeners will be added and removed accordingly. So now let's see what the handle scroll function looks like. And we see that because we're not actually accessing the event object, we don't need to pass it in here. And then we simply update the window scroll Y key with window.scroll Y, which we have access to natively in JavaScript. So let's give it a save and scroll. And we see that the values are being set accordingly. You may see these fractional values getting set. So to remedy that, you can do something like math.floor to round down these values. And this will allow us to have round numbers just like that.